Hi and welcome to the latest episode of the We Need Your Roads podcast and shot in the back by Buford Tannen over a matter of $80. What kind of future do you call that, David? Fucking $80. $80. $80. That's quite a bit back in the 1800s, to be fair. That was quite a bit back in the day, you know. What is $80? I'm not, I'm not saying Doc had it coming, but you know. <laughs> by the way, um, I've written in my script, crickets and tumbleweeds blow by as we wait for David to Google a joke. No, no, no. So I was in a bar the other day, Neil. Just sitting in a bar, as you do. And uh, a little... So, so did you get... Uh, okay, wait, wait, wait. Wait for the wait for the wait for where I'm going with this, and uh, a dung beetle just uh, just rolls in into this bar, and he was looking for a stool. Was he with Barry Gibb from the Bee Gees? Because that's what you just sounded like. <laughs> no, he was looking for a stool. Uh-huh. Stool. Man. Oh, I know. I'm just not. I'm just as as they say he's in the a, wrestling business. I, he's 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 a he's I, a dung I'm no beetle. selling that one, David. Yeah. I oh, know, I've, I've, I'm tired. I'm not, I've not got the effort for these jokes anymore. <laughs> and I, I think our listenership will thank you for that. Anyway, on this week's show, we give our takes on the Hawkeye and Matrix Resurrections trailers. Also, I give a non-spoiler review of Sex Education Season 3. And I've got some thoughts on uh, the BBC's latest big Sunday night drama, A Vigil. So, on with the bows. Because, David, it's Hawkeye. Get it? On with the... I thought we were going to do news. Oh, we are. I, we are. I just wrote that and I, thought, I wanted to get a really bad pun in that was better than your joke. So, on with the bows. Oh, okay. <laughs> no, okay. Yeah, no, I like the pun. I like the pun. But we'll, 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 we'll bring it back to news for a second, yeah. So, well, do you want to kick off news? What do you want to talk about in the news, David? Yeah, so I've got some news that I saw, I think, yesterday. And it kind of made me really sad. So, it's Wheel of Time related news. I don't know if you've seen this, Neil. And it's not, <laughs> I have not. It's, not. it's not fucking good. So, they've recast Matt for season two. Okay. Matt being one of the three main male protagonists for the show. Uh-huh. And if you remember in the last episode, I said that if there's going to be one actor that comes out of the show that's going to be like, you know, that might be a might break out role for them, it will be Barney Harris as Matt because his portrayal just looked fucking spot on. I do remember you saying and that. And he's been, he's been recast <laughs> for season two, which is fucking awful. I mean, there's no way of like tying that in, like, in anything positive because it's not he's going to be played by Donnell Finn uh, fucking good luck to him because after having a season where a character's been portrayed and then having to you know fill those shoes or just you know he's already on a downward slope in terms of audiences are going to look at him negatively unless Barney Harris just completely fucking fucks the role and he's not very good at all which I you know I, I doubt so he was David is, is it going to be a case of hashtag not my Barney uh, maybe it might well be. I'm gonna like that. We should start that when it happens. But uh, actually, no, that's negative. I don't want to be negative about the wheel of time. But I feel I feel quite disheartened by this news. If I'm honest, sad. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, I, I'm I don't really care. <laughs> to be honest, no. What, dude, it's just bad. Like, have you ever name? Uh, can you think of one show where they've recast a very key character for season two or three or whatever, and the show still gone on to be a success? Uh, yeah, to be fair, I'm not. I'm not that concerned about cast changes on Wheel of Time. I mean, uh, I, as I said, although we like we know from the books they're kind of main characters. I I don't think they're really gonna the 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 blokes are gonna be that much of a focus in it. To be fair, I think you know we saw a lot more of the. Well, theme. there's no. Well, they have to be. They kind of have to be because they're Tavern, right? Or however you say that word. I'm gonna butcher stuff. Tavern again, but t- Tavern, whatever. Where the the, the you know. The, the wheel weaves around them. That's the whole point of them, is that the whole story is evolved around them. That's quite literally the entire character thing. They don't want it to, but that is that is how the story is. Their, their, their actions are completely uh, decisive about everything. You know, they're a ripple effect. I mean, it's not a good look, is it? Like, recasting the main... Ha- oh, no, I'll, I'll, tell you, I'll tell you what showed it, did it? Game of Thrones done it a couple of times with um, with the kids... And obviously, they got better actors in for you know, a bit like, uh, older. Um, the actress from who? who in Game of Thrones? Okay, um, I forget the. Act- I know they re- I know they shot the pilot and they recast Catelyn and they recast uh, Daenerys. Yeah, but we never saw that. It was never broadcast. So I- well, no, we never saw it. Yeah, that's. But no, so there was I'm a couple. Think of Dario who- Naharis. Um, yeah, he was because he was, he was, it was yeah. um yeah, the, he, right. he was the baddie. He was the bad guy from but he's, Deadpool. But he is a sort of. He's a side character, though, isn't he? Yeah, yeah. Um, and 
ch- changing some of the kid actors as they were got older. Didn't you know? Again, so like the- there was no, but there was none of the main characters, though, was it? It wasn't like John. It wasn't Daenerys. It wasn't Rob or Ed or you know. I think you're thinking that the change, the change of this character is going to be like major, major. I don't think he's going to be. Well, it is. He's a he's a he's a big. He, no, he, oh no, he will be. All right, he will be. All right. I- you're you're more wheel of time than me, man. So uh... he ain't he ain't a side character, Matt. Okay, he's a he's a big he's a big deal. Anyway, uh, are we done ranting about wheel of time? Well, you know, I'm just sad about it. I'm just, it's not a good thing. Like it's it doesn't bode well, does it? Really? But we'll see. Good luck to Donnell Finn though for the second season, mate. As I said, making that show at the exact same time as you're making Lord of the Rings didn't bode well for it in the first place, and uh, we'll, we'll wait and see on that one. Uh, but at the minute, what I'm excited about is there are so many absolutely amazing shows out in the states right now that our friends on Twitter are telling us about, and we haven't got them over here. And why do we not get them day and date now, or even the next day after? I mean, when massive shows like Mandalorian and Game of Thrones and Walking Dead. They would be broadcast the same time on uh, Sky Atlantic and on Disney Plus. No, sorry, I'm just on Sky Atlantic. I think we're yeah. doing it, and we could record it then and watch it first thing in the morning when we woke up without any spoilers, or it'd be shown the very next night at prime time at nine o'clock. But there's a lot of shows now that they're waiting for them to complete the runs before we even get to see them. So first up, show that I'm looking forward to seeing from the trailers. It looks absolutely amazing. Is Sterling Harjo and Takaway Titi's new show for FX, Reservation Dogs which is a comedy drama about a group of teenagers living in a reservation in rural Oklahoma. And they're planning their big move to California and they're kind of thieving stuff from the locals and from all that kind of stuff. But the big thing about the show is everyone's saying it's probably one of the best representations of Native Americans that you're going to see because there's there's all Native um, American people behind the camera, on the writers, the cast. You know, it's literally, it's almost like spot the white Western actor in it. And... It's you, but no, <laughs> okay. in a, that's in a good way, right? Because you're watching the right, show yeah, and you're yeah, yeah, yeah. you're not getting a sanitized version. This is literally you're getting to see what that's like, uh, what the lifestyle was like, and yeah, yeah, the yeah, slang yeah. and 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 it's just it's a brilliant and what it is it's a really kind of funny melancholic drama as well. So it's got funny bits from what I've seen, and but the, the drama in it's got it's got that edge to it as well. And uh, I just I just really want it over here. Um, in America, it's on. Um, um, FX. So I'm hoping over here. I think there's a rumor that it's going to be coming to star on Disney Plus sometime this autumn. Okay. And well, it says autumn. Well, it's already almost mid September. So you know, autumn is essentially next month. So hopefully we're going to get that. So hopefully by the time. Well, actually, I keep saying by the time this episode goes out, the, the day we're actually recording this episode, the last episode of season one has just aired in the states, and it has been renewed for season two. So there you go. Disney Plus UK, get your finger out because it's been renewed for a second season. So give us some reservation dogs. Yeah, do you do you understand the intricacies of uh, broadcasting, like data distribution? Well, no. <laughs> like why? Like like what is the actual reason why we aren't getting these shows when the Americans are, or even like a, you know a week afterwards or whatever? Do you know, or are you just speculating? I ain't got no no no. I ain't got a fucking clue. So, I was hoping you. Oh know. well, my guess is it's something like. It all comes down to international distribution deals, right? So, um, like, for example, H- we don't have HBO as a separate um, service in the UK. So all their stuff yeah, ends up on Sky Atlantic. Sky Atlantic. But, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. but then FX, um, they had a deal with BBC Two. So stuff like uh, What We Do in the Shadows and um, um, Pose and a few other shows like that, they were going to the iPlayer. Yeah. I'm assuming it works both ways, though. You know, like, we'll get Doctor Who or something that they love. Uh, you know, yeah, well, earlier. actually, I'm trying to think. Dead Pixels, which was a good E4 show I watched uh, last year, and yeah. that was on. I think that was on FX in the states uh, a few weeks back. So yeah, but, there you are. But I mean, you know, uh, I, it's not the same. You want it now? Yeah, man. Americans get everything. They get everything early, and everything's better. Well, I, I, I and bigger in America. Bigger, definitely. But I, I, I don't disagree, <laughs> disagree on that thing. But um, yeah. So the next show I'm waiting on is the third long-awaited series of What We Do in the Shadows. Now, in theory, again, this show shouldn't work, right? It's a New Jersey set spin-off from Watiti's Kiwi set original, and it just has. Ab- I'm sensing a theme here. What, what Watiti of, uh, of Waititi here? Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, look, look. The, the thing is, it sounded like a bad idea on paper, right? You're recasting it all. You're setting it in the states, and everyone's like, "Oh no, we're gonna have a bunch of rubbish Americans." trying to do this like really good kiwi based idea but mm-hmm. it was really good david it's probably one of the best comedies on tv at the minute 
And ironically, they can't, they're all three of the lead roles in it, um, well, the three main vampires, they're all British actors. <laughs> so you've got Matt Berry, you've got Natasha Dimitriou, and you've got the big guy, Nando, and I can't remember what his actual actor's name is. But it's really funny. They've just, I think because it's written by uh, Taka Waititi and Jermaine Clement still, even though they're not in it, um, it's still got that tone to it. And of course, they said it in New Jersey. So there's like, I don't know, it just, it's, and some of the class cameos in it, man. This is your spoiler alert. We've had Mark Hamill cameo in it in season two. Um, Batista turned up in it. Wesley Snipes in season two as well, man, as Blade on a conference call, which was just brilliant. Um, and now, like I say, we're on to season three, and um, it's just really funny, man. It's, it's He came in as Blade. Yeah, but on a conference call. Yeah, that is, that is, yeah, oh, that is, yeah, okay, that is quite... The Vampire Council, and Watiti and Clement's <laughs> characters, I think, from uh, the original film turned up in it. That is, yeah, that, that's clever. And um, yeah. the um, it's very, very clever. What was the third show, then, that you were after? So, and the third show is, well, it's not all bad news, because tomorrow night in the UK, will be uh, Wednesday the 22nd of September... Why The Last mm. Man debuts on Disney Plus, so only a week or so late from when it was aired in America, with three back to back episodes tomorrow night in the UK. How's how has the uh, general reviews for that gone down? It's been for the first episode. Fairly positive actually. And fairly positive okay. Because we were looking at it and we were quite like eh. Trailer seemed generic. It, yeah, trailer seemed quite generic. Didn't have a lot of the humour that is there in the uh, comic. But um, on one of the other podcasts we listen to, I'll give them a shout out, the Pilot TV podcast. I say shout out, they're like one of the biggest TV podcasts out there. Uh, I was going to say, yeah. <laughs> I mean, they, but they... Uh, shout out from us they who don't really you know, aren't on your radar at all. But hey, we're here. Hey, what, hey their, their host liked my comment earlier today. <laughs> it's uh, They had um, the showrunner and one of, the, one of the lead actresses on there this week. And they were saying in their interview that... Um, once it kind of establishes itself, there is it does it is really funny in place. It has got that humour to it, and so I think even they were like, okay, so the network probably went here. We go, we we got to have like a, a Walking Dead style post apocalyptic show trailer, and they were like, but it's funny, and I said, no, no, it can't be funny. So I kind of get there like there's a that bit of initial battling between the creators on the network. But hopefully if it's a hit, then they can be like, look, fuck off, let's do what we do. Because it's a perfect story. They don't need to change anything. I kind of imagine it in my head as, uh, do you ever watch The Last Man on Earth? Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, I imagine it as a cross between that and like a fucking, I don't know, like well, Walking Dead. Like Love and Monsters. Movie. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. To me, in tone, it's a bit more Love and Monsters crossed with 24 in a Walking Dead world. So it's not zombies, but it's... With, with 24? Because it's got lots of action in it. No, there's like there's like... That was me trying to do the the twenty four clock yeah. thing. Was it? No, well, it was an attempt. It wasn't a very good one. And following on from Why the Last Man, also dropping this Friday in the UK, we have Green Knight. Green Knight. Oh, is it Green Knight? It's Green Knight, isn't it? I think it's Green Knight. I'm pretty sure Green Knight drops this Friday in Prime. It's Green Knight, right, Neil? You're going to say Green Knight. I wasn't actually going to say Green Knight. It does it drop. Damn it. It does drop this Friday. So, again, that'll be someone else we'll be talking about. Finally. Finally. Because it's on theme with the fucking release date Shh, debacle that we've had. Yes, yeah, it's, it's not been good. Whole load of sh- and, and it's, uh, and it's I'm only feeling on... really ranty this episode, Neil. I'm feeling, I don't know why. Ranty. I mean, it's because I've had a bad day at work. And uh, no, I just, you know what, I'm, I'm just feeling ranty. I thought that was going to be Stop a apologize. I, I thought that was going to be a set up for a joke there, David. No, 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 that's no joke. I've had a really bad day at work. I was like, "Uh uh-huh, what's the punchline? (laughs) No, no, no. no. (laughs) Just feel sympathy for me. That's all I'm wanting. No, I actually wasn't going to say The Green Knight. I obviously forgot that. But yeah, The Green Knight, um, we'll be watching that on Friday as well, as well as the fucking morning show, Foundation, uh, just everything generally coming out. And also Star Trek Lower Decks Season 2 is on Fridays as well in the UK now on Amazon Prime, which is actually getting funny and funnier as it goes on. I know, and actually, David, I was going to talk about Apple's long-awaited sci-fi epic Foundation from Isaac Asimov, which makes its bow on Apple TV this Friday as well. Isaac Asimov? Yes. Proper that hard sci-fi. That sounds familiar. That sounds familiar. Yeah, he wrote some of the like best-known epic sci-fis. Um, this basic, the basic idea of Foundation for what I'm seeing, uh, it's got Lee Pace in it and um, Jared Harris. So great actors okay. there. And I googled Isaac Asimov, and um, you saw a lot uh, of stuff. came up. Okay, that's... that 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 can't be correct. <laughs> anyway, yeah. So the basic idea of Foundation is, you know, millions of years in the future, brilliant society, and Jared Harris's um, science dude like figures out this new kind of math maths thing. And essentially figures out that their whole kind of way of life and universe is going to come to an end. 
and he starts planning to like save civilization. So it's almost kind of like that Superman Krypton thing, you know. But he starts making plans to sort of save their civilization and found a new one, hence Foundation. But the story, from what I gather, takes place over millenniums. So I'm not quite sure how the time jumps are going to work in it. But as I said, I don't really know anything about it. But with it, visually, it looks on par with Dune Man. So for a TV show, it looks absolutely amazing. And you've got some great actors in it. And um, again, the advanced word from some of the people who have seen this is it's also breathtaking and probably going to be on your end of year best shows of uh, the year lists as well. And of course, David, there's one more thing that drops on Friday. It's not the Green Knight. Oh, it's not the Green oh. Knight. And it's no, okay. It's not. Uh, it's not um, Foundation. It is, of course. Can't believe. What, okay, I want to guess. I want to guess. What? 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 What we're talking? What? What? Uh, what's the? What's the network? Network. Netflix. Netflix. Okay, Netflix. Uh, on Friday. <laughs> um, oh, uh, this is, is it? This is so funny. Midnight Mass Neil. Yes. You googled that. <laughs> Did you google that? No, I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. I was just trying to build anticipation. Mm-hmm. Anticip- yeah, no, anyway. Uh, no, I knew I knew it was going to be Midnight Mass, mate. I've been waiting for this for ages. I was going to sign up for that two-day um, event thing, you know, where it launched. No, not two-day event thing. Uh, what am I talking about? Uh, the midnight launch of it, where you could watch the two episodes, the first two episodes of the show early, by, like, a couple of days. But, like, it was... It, it, you had to watch it at, like some stupid o'clock in the morning and I was like I don't know, fuck that I need my beauty sleep I'll, but, uh, I'll say no I'm looking for oh I'm <laughs> so excited and of course and of course once we've uh, fully binged it all I think we'll have a, a spoiler special coming up on that one right yes with a bit of uh, a fantastic Flanagan facts section as well that I've been uh, prepping fantastic for fantastic Flanagan facts yes yeah. okay would you call a fans of Flanagan a flanner fact would you call fans of Flanagan Flanagers yeah Flanagan. Are you a Flanagan? Yeah, I like it. I'd be a Flanagan. Yeah, yeah, you're a right Flanagan. I'd be a Flanagan. I'd love to Flanagan that man. And you, ma- and you made it weird. You made it weird, David. <laughs> okay, so moving on to uh, this week's trailers. Except they're not this week's trailers. So mo- uh, this this month's trailers. <laughs> yeah. so, so moving on to two trailers that we saw a, w- a few weeks ago from before we recorded this that we now want to talk about. And first up is Hawkeye. Yep. We finally have our trailer for the least anticipated Marvel show ever, and it looks good. And it's quickly become like my most anticipated Marvel show. And it's a Christmas show that somehow because manages it looks amazing. to channel. How did we not think of this? Die Hard. I know. I, I think. How did we not think of that? I mean, well, how did we not think Marvel Christmas TV show? David, David, I need you to bring 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 your uh, your highness down a little bit. Sorry, because I think you're, sorry, you're gonna sorry. you're gonna get swarmed it's... by dogs. <laughs> possibly, possibly dolphins. I did wonder why all these bats turned up at the window. Yeah. So um, <laughs> I think we're quite here for this, aren't we, David? Oh, yeah, no, 100%. I'm there for so, it. So a little bit of background on, on this. So spoiler warning. Friends, Romans, TV watchers, spoilers ahead. So spoiler warning here for Endgame and Black Widow. So, we know that in Endgame, Clint went to a dark place and, well, just flat out killed a bunch of people before Black Widow brought him back into the fold. And as we know, at the end of Black Widow, Julia Louis Dreyfus's magnificently named Valentina Allegra de Fontaine turns up to manipulate a grieving Yelena and tells her, oh, do you want to know who was responsible for Natasha's death? Cue a pew rampage. I mean, there was no there was no rampage at the end of it, but they was insinuating that it's going to happen, right? Okay. You know, I, I I actually haven't seen Black Widow myself yet, so yeah, well, that was definitely just spoiled for me as well, <laughs> as well as well, fellow listeners. So uh, you're not alone. Thanks, Neil. Yeah, I will. You did say you I did say spoiled, spoiler warning. But... Yeah, but you... I know, but I didn't know what for, Neil. <laughs> I didn't know what for. I literally, and now I literally said spoiler warning for Endgame and Black Window. Black Window. Oh, and Black Window. <laughs> Black Window. Yeah, it's a Black Mirror spin-off. It's like real window, but you can't see anything. Yeah, exactly. But the trailer doesn't really even have any mention of um, Florence Pugh's Yelena character coming into it. Uh, instead, what we do get is Jerry, this Christmas, Jeremy Renner is Bruce Willis in Die Hawk Hard Eye. <laughs> or Die Eye <laughs> Hawk Hard. I mean, I feel the Shane Black vibes from this trailer, man. And from what everyone's was least anticipated show, this has definitely got my interest now. Oh, no, 100%, 100%. So let's uh, go through go the trailer. So firstly, we see that the Barton family are on what looks like a vacation to New York, where we see that Rogers the Musical capture the heart uh, of a again, hero. Again, how did we not think of this? 
Well, uh, this is clearly as a thick Steve Rogers the musical. Yeah. It's, it's on Broadway. It's waiting to be made. Well, it's, pro- it's waiting to be made. Dude, it's probably being made right now, let's be honest. Uh, yeah, yeah I mean, if it isn't, someone needs to get on that. Like, straight away. This is clearly Disney and Marvel dipping their toes into completely taking over the world of live theatre as well as cinema. Give it ten years, David. All musical, all theatre will just be musical versions of Marvel films. Imagine it. It's a beautiful, beautiful world to live it, in, Neil. It will be like Spider-Man Turn Off the Dark. It never happened. And um, I actually had a few thoughts about a couple of potential Marvel movie musicals we could have. So we could have crossover musicals and everything. Like it could be a musical, a Marvel mu- musiverse, musiverse, a musiverse. Huh? The musiverse. I like it. No, Dad, it's, it's, it's got to be a better name for that. Uh, I had a couple. So you got Doctor Strange in a Multiverse of Melodies. Uh, oh yeah, I like Avengers it. Ensemble. Oh yeah, no, okay, good. good. And a Hamilton-style hip hop opera about the early years of Nick Fury, just called. Fury. Okay, okay. I like. I'm liking the first two. Fury. Fury needs a bit of work. Well, yeah, because it's but... the early days, man. So you know. Yeah, yeah. No, but I mean, yeah. I, 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 we should, we should, we should. You know what? Why don't we do it? Um, well, I mean, we don't. Get we right don't have the rights right. to any of those um, properties. Hey, you think you think Lin Manuel Miranda had Hamiltons? Yeah, but Lin- you can't think of that way, Neil. You just got to ride it, and you got to swing for the fences. I, I'm I'm fairly certain that Hamilton didn't have 25 movies made over 20 years that redefined cinema about him. Nah, maybe maybe, maybe, maybe not. not. My first thought was that taking your family to the theatre in a superhero film slash show is just a terrible idea. I mean, come on. I'm, think Batman. I'm just glad that Hawkeye's wife and daughter, none of them are called Martha. Uh, <laughs> okay, like, you yeah. never get a good night out as a superhero on a night. Something bad's clearly going to happen there. Yeah, they don't do it. But superheroes aren't allowed downtime, no, man. of course you not. Think, like, you think, know, nah, it's not going to happen. And you know what? Something always happens with them around. The uh, the chances of that happening are probably very slim. I mean, how many world-ending sort of terrorist events have you been involved in, Neil? Whenever you've gone out to the cinema or to the theatre. But it happens quite a lot for these people. I did have the power you know, cut during 28 out. Days Later once, and we had to leave the cinema. That would have been fucking petrified. Yep, a little bit. A little bit of a brown trousers time, not going to lie. Um, but, so, <laughs> anyway. we do see another mask of vigilante is terrorising bad guys of the city. Which, if you think about it, was basically the storyline we had on uh, DC's Arrow show every season. But then we get the motherfucking most wonderful time of the year kicking in. And we see Clint corner the new vigilante, who, let's face it, we already know is going to be Kate Bishop, played by the always excellent Haley Steinfeld. And she's uh, calling herself the self-proclaimed... Greatest archer in the world. I was quite surprised. So, yeah, because she's looking like, you know, like mini Hawkeye, you know, like in Young Avengers or whatever it's going to be. I don't know. Because um, I thought that was, they were building that up to be his daughter. That was the only sort of question that I was going to bring in and ask you about. Because No, I don't think so. Because he's clearly got his daughters in the film. Uh, show. Yeah, it's exactly. So I'm a bit like, oh, okay. So his daughter isn't, you know, miniature Hawkeye. This woman's going to be. This, 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 uh, what's her character name, did you say? Kate Bishop. Kate Bishop, yeah. thank you. Well, I mean, I think a common thread throughout the trailer is Clint promising his family he's going to be home for Christmas and that he isn't in any danger. And so, yeah. you know, obviously training your daughter to be an assassin, probably not what he doesn't want to do. So it makes sense that he, he doesn't want his family connected with that. So uh, it also appears, though, that Kate has took on Clint's old persona, uh, and that's why many, many bad guys who think she's him now want to murder her. Yeah. So, you know... Yeah. What was the persona's name again? In, was uh, it Ronin? In... No, was it Ronin? It might have been. I don't think they ever really named him, did they? He just, like, he was running around with samurai sword killing gangsters. But, anyway, we get a few action scenes where we basically see them in all kinds of trouble and generally being not very, very good of it. Um, yeah. We see Vera Famaga as, an, as a yet unnamed character. And, of course, that's um, the lady from the, sh- uh, the Conjuring films. Uh, uh-huh. mi- um, what the Mrs. Warren, and of course, what we get more of what we all really want: more shots of Rogers the Musical. <laughs> <clears throat> and of yeah. course, you know, oh, they seriously they've got to make it. Also, well, I mean, forward work is a really good opera, wouldn't it? Norse opera. Um, yeah, I'd be less inclined to watch that. Cause it's opera. Mainly because I'm not a big I'm not a big opera fan. Um, but yeah. Uh, but also, okay, so following on from David's hatred of opera, uh, we get the best <laughs> slash cheesiest tagline ever. This holiday season, the best gifts come with bows. Genius. Just absolute genius, man. And then we get a little bit more of them being not very good superheroes before Clint gets the last word that is full on just Bruce Willis. Uh, 
This is some Christmas. I mean, <laughs> it's just he's just basically Bruce Willis in Die Hard, isn't he? It's uh, yeah, oh, it's it's fucking awesome. The entire the entire the entire bloody trailer was it was just brilliantly done, and it's got me it's got me excited for a show that I otherwise didn't give a shit about, <laughs> and I'm 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 fully there for it. I mean, yeah, I was pleasant. I was pleasantly surprised by this. I mean, everyone loves Die Hard, which is undoubtedly. A- when was the last decent Christmas actiony Die Hardy film that we even had? You know, when was that action Christmas film? Probably, I can't think for a while. There's, there was a couple of like decent newish Christmas films in the last couple of years. There was um, uh, the Seth Rogen, jo- Joseph Gordon Levitt one. Was it the last last night? That was pretty good. Office Christmas Party is actually half decent. You know what, Marvel dipping their toe into this, it it, it it opens up a whole new world for them. You know, are we going to get a Marvel... Santa you know, Claus the movie. ...coming out for... Oh, no, no, I'm saying, like, are we going to get a Marvel rom-com? A romance sort of a genre for Valentine's Day, perhaps? You know, like, where they... They could they could do it all. They could do... I don't know who between. Oh, I've, for the rom-com, there's plenty, but, plenty, uh, plenty of choices, man. Let's face <laughs> it, they got, the, they got the cast list <laughs> and the characters to do it. Uh... Yeah, I mean, are we going to get a nice um, Halloween special, perhaps? Well, you you, know? you have had Marvel Zombies in What If, and that was definitely testing the walls. That was dark as shit, man. I can't believe they got away with that. Yeah, I'm I'm struggling through What If. If I'm yeah, I, I've not watched all of them. Um, I, it, it's very hard to keep my attention, but I thought the zombie one was brilliant. It was just like, yeah, it's definitely. I haven't seen that th- one yet. I've watched. I think I've only watched the two. Yeah, the first two. Yeah, they weren't yeah. great. No, skip, just skip ahead straight to the zombie one. Watch that. I and kind of lost in even in the second one. I kind of just lost it. The second Thanos wasn't Thanos because Black Panther was just like a, a nice guy or something like that. I can't remember why. It was just like okay, he's just part of the crew, like Ocean's <laughs> Eleven style. Yeah, yeah, just like yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, but it lost me with that. I've got getting to. back to Hawkeye, I th- the, the only kind of thing I don't uh, potentially with this show that might not be in this way, but is it does feel very low stakes. It feels like a caper of a show. And uh, it probably won't yes, have any. Yeah. It probably won't have many earth-shattering changes for the MCU. I mean, as as we know, the Pew is definitely going to turn up looking for revenge on Clint for Natasha's death in Endgame. So they can tease the whole "oh, she's going to kill him" thing again. But I mean, I think at this point he's just going to retire gracefully, pass off the the uh, the bow to um, yeah, Kate. That's, Kate, that's the big. That's the big thing, isn't it? That's going to happen. Is is the introduction? Yeah, and as and as you go forward, Kate will be probably an Avenger alongside Yelena. So this will be probably where they first meet, fight a couple of times, and then they'll be like best buddies. <laughs> we should be friends. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's 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 the thing, isn't it? Like you say, it's going to be low stakes. It is literally going to be him getting home for Christmas. It's going to be the introduction of Kate Bishop into the wider world of the Marvel yeah. cinematic universe, and we're going to enjoy it because it's Hawkeye playing a Christmas. Bruce Willis. Fucking super... Yeah, Bruce Willis. It's, 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 Hawkeye's it's, not a superhero. He's, he's a dude with a bow. Bruce, do you reckon Bruce Willis is going to come in with some sort of cameo? No, because Bruce Willis mind. is terrible at everything now. If they were going to do it, they would have done it in uh, the new series of Brooklyn I think Nine-Nine. you can manage a cameo uh, without, without you know, ruining something. No, You know, I don't. just like, be, 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 I don't know, be like a waiter or something. <laughs> just, just, like, just throw him in. Bruce there. Willis is not going to come in and be a fucking waiter. I don't know. I don't. That was just the first thing I saw of because I paused the trailer on the scene where he's running through the restaurant in his tux. So, oh. so that was the first thing I thought of. Uh, no, I, I'm quite happy to not have Bruce Willis on screen again at the minute. He had his. Let me have him ice skating in um in that massive ice skating place in New York, Rockefeller Center. You know. Yes. Yes. No. That's... You know, I'm glad you. I'm glad you're on key. Yeah. Well, you know, someone's got to do the work. Um, anyway, Hawkeye drops on Disney Plus weekly from November 24th with just six episodes confirmed. And uh, my excitement level is, uh, hmm, it could be good right now. So so with six episodes confirmed, when does that make the final episode drop? I, probably <laughs> Christmas week, I'd imagine, which would be perfect. Yeah, yeah, it would be, wouldn't if it? If it's coming out end, end of November, uh, mid-November, yeah, 24th of November, it's probably going to be a Christmas holiday week. That will be the last episode. Boom. Perfect. It's almost like they know Amazing. what they're doing. <laughs> yeah, now, yeah, yeah. Next, it's almost like they planned it. <laughs> now, next up, arguably the bigger trailer this week, that week, when it came out a few weeks ago, is the Matrix Resurrections trailer, directed by Lana Wachowski, which she co-wrote with Cloud Atlas author David Mitchell. Now, say what you want about the quality of the Wachowskis' output, but they've always made the films they wanted to make with very few compromises. And uh, clearly, her collaboration with Mitchell and Cloud Atlas has lent itself to the new Matrix film. 
Now, um, with The Matrix, I think we can both agree that the first film is an all-time classic of the sci-fi and action genres. With revolutionary yeah. work behind the screens, the advent of bullet time, that popularised in every movie for like the next ten years. Now, the second yeah. and third films didn't really hold up on repeat viewings, and it's even more obvious now they didn't have an idea for another film, let alone two. And it's that classic thing you hear from writers and musicians. You have your whole life to make your first album and write your first book, but then when it's successful, you've got to do it all again within a year at least. Um, the ongoing story was fairly terrible and the only real saving grace of the other two films. And I think the reason that some on the internet are misremembering them as good films is that they do still have some incredible action set pieces, like the, hey, well, like the highway chase in the second film and the big final Neo versus Smith showdown in Revolutions. Um... But uh, yeah, I mean, I don't think that's solely the reasons why. I mean, some of the some of the matrix and ethical questions that were being asked in the show in the films as well were still fucking brilliant, mind blowing. That 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 moment where he meets the architect and it, and there's that revelation that blew my mind, man. Really? When? Yeah, I, yeah, it's brilliant, mate. mate brilliant. I've never heard anyone say the architect scene was brilliant. Most people, when I remember, and I remember seeing. I know. I loved it. I loved it. I, I loved it. I might have to put that up as a poll. Is the architect in the Matrix films good a good scene or a scene where everyone went great? Some old dudes. Well, when you realise that he's that Neo isn't is a what does what do, he, he the architect tells Neo that he is a purpose built an anomaly within the within the Matrix, right? And uh, to, to to allow them to basically have this rebellion to keep that zero point one percent of humanity on side with them. And you learn all of that in like a five minute conversation and that he's the fifth or sixth. He's like the fifth or sixth yeah, yeah. Iteration, iteration of, of the one. Yeah. yeah. It, 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 of the, uh, and, and Zion's been destroyed before. And it's thankfully been destroyed again. Thankfully, because um, they had too, all of this. Th- David, they were too busy with the raised music. I was about to say, and the leather. I was about to say that that's but, why Zion keeps getting destroyed. They have terrible raves. <laughs> the cave raves. Uh, but yeah, that I mean, I remember that bit, and I was just like, "Boom, fucking hell!" Mate, what a, what a honestly, revelation. at the time when I saw that in the cinema when it first came out, and like read reviews and all that at the time when that first came out, most people I spoke to and most reviews were like, "And the film just stops with general exposition for, and it, it was it five minutes because it felt like twenty minutes of him just sitting it's roughly there about five minutes, yeah, just sitting there going blah 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 blah. Here's all the plot stuff and." Like you don't want that at the end of the film. Yeah, and you see all the other iterations of Neo on the screens around him being like, "Fuck you, I don't believe you," and all the other sort of, you know. Yeah, see, I uh, didn't remember any of that reactions. Stuff, man. <laughs> no, ah, uh, yeah, no, I remember. It was, I loved it, but yeah, it's not nowhere near as good as the first. And the third film got even David, got even stranger, David. I think, with some of the stuff. Pepperidge Farm remembers. But, yeah, a lot of the uh, religious religious symbolism within it was just. Crazy. Cod. Probably gonna probably gonna continue. Well, see now before we get into the new trailer, a little background because I completely forgotten the end of Revolutions. Now I know that, and you can correct me if I'm wrong here. I I I believe that Neo died defeating Smith, but I definitely forgot that the machine struck a deal with Neo that if he defeated yeah, yeah, the yeah. power hungry Smith who was taking over the yeah. Matrix, there would be a peace that would last as long as the humans who desire it, and they would all be offered the opportunity to leave the Matrix. Uh, to we yeah yeah to either leave or remain okay yeah. so that's where that's, that's how we ended yeah so so neo uh, the, the, the the yeah 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 and he he becomes like some sort of fucking code or something I can't remember and uh, a chode when, when yeah when a uh, uh, smith um, integrates it oh, I can't I don't know exactly I, like, it, I can't remember I need to fucking rewatch it myself. no don't don't do that to when yourself he, when sniff becomes neo just read uh, just read Wikipedia. Then, he blows him all up from the inside, and then that's how he kills Smith, and then he, he's dead in the process yeah, himself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This brings us to the new trailer. Um, now, first of all, we get a very CGI-looking, the salvaging shot of a city. But, you know, that's fine, because it's to infer we are back in The Matrix. And um, it's The Soprano. I don't know how I feel about that, to be honest. Because it was... Uh, you don't know you're in The Matrix. That's the whole fucking point of The Matrix. So to be shown so obviously that you're in it... Well, but... I was kind of, when I first saw that, a bit like, oh, okay, but maybe this is an iteration of The Matrix which you're meant to know. You know, it's... it's no, 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 no. It's, it's definitely to set the... Attention look, look, how many years ago were the other films, right? And this will come to what my general thoughts on it is. It's setting up the basic story again for a new audience. So they have to explain everything. So this looks a bit fake. Oh, and then we see... 
Yeah, but you don't. Yeah, but that's not how the Matrix was explained to us in the first no, place. You don't course. need to tell people. People aren't that fucking stupid. Yes, they are. People. You don't need people to, have no, got dumber. They weren't before. No. They weren't before. You don't need to tell people we're obviously in the Matrix because look at this completely fake city behind me. You know, the fact that you didn't ever know whether you were in the Matrix or not was one of the best fucking things about the first film. It's basically The Sopranos, because Thomas Anderson, yep, that's Neo's name, remember, is talking to, psych- to a psychiatrist, played by Dr. Doogie Howser himself, Mr. Neil Patrick Howers. And we quickly learn that Neo has been having recollections of what happened in the earlier films. So at this point, I'm going to have to surmise that when Neo defeated Smith at the end of Revolutions, he was actually placed back in the Matrix by the look of things, and he's completely unaware that he's in the Matrix. Now, what I think it is, what I think it could be, is an early iteration of the Matrix. So, like, so it's an early. So it's a flashback. Build. It's one of these early ones that you just mentioned from. Not that I think. I think this is our Neo. I don't think this is a. I don't think this is a Neo One or a Neo Two, Three, Four, whatever. Or a Neo Geo. Um, uh, I think I think this is our Neo because I think he's saving our Trinity because Trinity also died in in the end of the third film. Uh, spoilers for the third film. <laughs> um, but the um, I forgot that as well, man. Yeah, yeah, she gets uh, impaled, Killed. doesn't she? Oh, well. Yeah. Um, the but uh, yeah, I th- I think so. What I think it could be is a uh, it's a, a very early iteration of what the Matrix is after the Matrix is kind of rebooted after because uh, because Smith took over the Matrix right at the end of the third film. Mm-hmm. He completely um, he he is fucking everywhere and it's it's his Matrix. He owns it. He's so here. When, He's here. Uh, He's so every fucking destroyed, destroyed it. Yeah, exactly. So when Neo destroyed it, uh, I think what we're seeing could be. A very early build, a very early iteration of what the Matrix is. Hmm. That's what. I, that's where I think we might be in the story potentially. I honestly hadn't. So we'll, we'll I hadn't given it that much thought because I was just like. And then next, he he, um, so he says to him, uh, I, "He thinks he's going crazy," and I think I'm going to say yes because we sit him. We, we we then get the most mean screenshot from the whole trailer, which was uh, Keanu sat, sitting in a bath with a rubber duck on his head. Yep. That's so wholesome. We then get John Wick. I mean, sorry, Neo. Uh, look, th- he clearly could not be bothered to change his hair or shave from what he looks like in John Wick when he came into the Matrix 4, did he? It's like, yeah. no, nope, I'm staying the same. <laughs> yeah. So jo- John Wick bumps into Trinity because Keanu clearly couldn't be bothered to shave or cut his hair in between filming. And so, and you know, again, his range is basically this or, you know, Bill and Ted. And um, so if you we weren't sure before, this scene basically confirms that Trinity and him are back in the Matrix and they don't know each other because she says have we met before yeah one thing one thing I do also want to talk about before that is Neil Patrick Harris Mm -hmm. uh, his glasses are very fucking blue okay Uh, blue pill blue oh oh, no so I'm just saying I'm just throwing that out there blue blue pill you know Neil Patrick Harris if you see his glasses have a look at his glasses mate I've got so many notes on the Alice in Wonderland stuff and the pills yeah yeah he is, yeah, anyway, Neil Patrick Harris's glasses are very fucking blue in, to, to the point where the blue pill blue. But anyway, and, let's, well, let's continue. speaking of the blue pills, we see Neo take a bunch of blue pills. And uh, then what I did like, my one, probably my favourite shot of the whole trailer, actually, is we then see a bunch of people wired into their devices, be it iPads or phones, well in the Matrix. So that's a really clever intertextual shot there, man. And I hope we get, yeah. I hope we get a lot more of this meta textuality in the film. Um, we then hear Jefferson Airplane's White Rabbit as we see a copy of Alice in Wonderland. And there are many, many more heavy handed allusions to that book in this trailer, such as we see such as when we see Jessica Henwick's character with a rabbit tattoo. And I could run through them all, but I'm really just not that interested uh, to do it. She, all. And, and and what colour glasses is she wearing? Oh, I didn't even notice. Red, blue, it's one it's, of the two. It's red. It is, it's red. It's red. I mean I'm not I'm not saying that there's a connection there between anything, oh, but I mean, I feel I feel like I'm you are saying that I'm saying there is, yeah. But speaking of red pills, for another segue, we then see New Morpheus, aka Candyman, Yaha Abdul Mateen II, offering a red pill, and then Jessica Henwick's new character telling Neo if he wants the truth to follow her. And didn't we just see this scene in the very first film with Trinity? So this really started giving me the what the fuck vibes and made me think, do you know what? This film is basically going to be The Matrix Awakens. In that we're going to see the same story as the original for some of the films running time, with Henwick and Abdul Mateen II stepping in for Fishburne and Moss's characters, even though Moss is actually in the film. I mean, Henwick just seems to be playing a new version of Trinity in this trailer. That character, not the actual Trinity, if that makes sense. 
Uh, she is, I, so yeah, I think it is the same Trinity. I think she's somehow being kept alive through the Matrix. Because I think we see that scene earlier of her being unplugged again. Okay, so... Uh, so I don't know if this is going to be a different iteration of her or if it is her. And the whole thing, it's, the Matrix is fucking complicated. It's a, you can't, it's so difficult. And it's one of these things that you can argue any angle on it because... It's so and left you, up in the could be, You could be right in, in a way. It's like it. being a philosophy student, man. Make a good enough argument, you're right. It doesn't matter. Yeah, um, exactly. <laughs> we then get a reprise of the Kung Fu training scene with Neo and New Morpheus with some obvious, obvious on that nose dialogue. You don't know me. No. I mean, come on. But then we finally see outside the Matrix <laughs> and a ship flying through the real world. Then cue the action and there's lots of action and there's agents and there's shooting and there's jumping from rooftops. And then our final scene is Jonathan Groff from uh, Frozen himself telling Neo, after all these years, going back to where it all started, back to the Matrix. Da, 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 yeah. Yeah. Do you know what? I, I'm kind of... T- no, nah, right, yeah, okay. awesome. My excitement level is a little bit less on this, man. I, I'm kind of torn on this one, right? Because on one hand, I'd, and this is down to me hearing what I'd heard on it, I'd heard that originally, wrongly it turns out, that Abdul Mateen II was actually going to be the new main character not just another version of Morpheus. And I, I thought the story would be following a new character waking from the Matrix and Neo would kind of come back around, you know, as his legendary figure and he'd kind of come back in like the, the second end of second act, third act and he'd kind of play the Morpheus role as this legendary figure who would train the next one to fight the machines. Solid idea, right? That's a better... Mm, yeah, no, yeah, it is. No, it's totally no, I don't easy. think so. I prefer I prefer where what I've seen from this trailer than but, what I've just. But heard it looks like we're just getting The Matrix Awakens, where at least a f- the first third of the film is just going to be. It is. No, it, it doesn't. I, 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 I don't think, think it is. I don't think it looks like The Matrix. I don't know what you're watching. If I'm honest, I you've, completely you've disagree. Got, with you've got what the same saying. actors doing the same scenes, retelling the same story from the first one. He's back in The Matrix. He's having uh, night, uh, dreams again. He takes the pills. Yeah, but I think the reasons behind everything are a lot different. And I think what, what, what will be similar is maybe the first half Yeah, that's what hour. I said, the first third of the film. Uh, and then the rest of it is going to be completely I mean, that's, what I, that's exactly what I just said, David. I said the first third of the film is basically going to be a nostalgia fan fest with a, re- a rework telling of the original story with a few new replacement actors. I mean, I hope the writers have a better idea for the second and third acts of the film because I, re- I really, really, really do not want this film to end with a hint that Agent Smith is returning. Because in a way, Smith was one of the original film's best and worst things at the same time. Yeah, I do. Yeah, I do. I agree with you. I agree with you there, because if they if they bring Smith back in any way, it completely uh, disregards the ending of the third. Yeah, yeah. And it's like the whole emotional impact of the third film is just completely fucking Wait, there, there was an emotional movies. impact in the third film? I must have missed that. Weaving... <sighs> Are you just hating on the Matrix? No, I'm hating on the Matrix revolutions and two and three, yeah. But basically, right, Weaving, he was much more infinitely charismatic as a fucking robot and the bad guy than Reeves was as Neo. And making him into the ultimate big bad kind of sidestepped the main issue that humanity was supposed to rise up and fight the machines led by Super Neo. But by the end of the third film, because of Smith becoming such a problem, the machines ended up working with the humans to stop Smith. So essentially it was a draw. And that is part of the problem. Yeah, I mean, with weaving, you have to remember. Sorry, go on, go on, go on. Yeah, I'll let you well, that's your part point. of the problem, right? Because weaving with his classic laconic delivery is just irreplaceable, in my opinion. I don't see Jonathan Groff stepping up. I don't think um, uh, Patrick Harris is going to be the main villain. And Reeves always needs a really good bad guy to bounce off. Otherwise, we're just going to be in for more CGI shenanigans. And also, my last note: please, 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 please no more crap raves. And, and I'm done. Uh, yeah, I agree. I agree. I agree with the crap raves. Okay. Definitely no more crap raves. Uh, I don't know who's going to be the villain. I mean, it, it could be Neil Patrick Harris. I don't think Neil Patrick Harris will be. But you know what? Those blue glasses, I might be looking into it a bit too much. But I think that is definitely onto something there. Uh, and the the actor who's like, back where it all started. Back the Matrix. I've forgotten his name. Jonathan Groff. He's it. Him, it's more likely. Uh, he, it's more likely with him. Um, I think the story is going to be pretty much rescuing Trinity in some respect. Do you reckon that she's she's dead in the real world, being kept alive by the machines, and that's why she's only yeah, alive in the Matrix? I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's I, a Black I don't Mirror think episode. this is going to be a. I don't think this is going to be a win for humanity because for that to happen, the machines would have to be destroyed and all humanity woken up because let's face because hum, humans are being used as batteries, right? 
to 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 basically they're gonna, they're gonna hint at it and see if this is a hit and then carry it on and probably get another two or three films out of it. I bet you money. I don't see this being a one and done, do you? Unless it's really crap. Um, I kind of, I, I don't know. I hope it is a one and done. I hope it is a one and done because I don't want to think of like you know cash milk that cash cow till the cow you know. In, in, I was going to say till the cows come home, but that doesn't make. Bearing any in mind that, that literally the Matrix two and three were exactly that. Uh, they were kind of Not, no kind yeah. of they were. Uh, I mean, we've dropped we've dropped a Wachowski, but we'll see, we'll see, we'll see how it goes. I mean, which one drops out is Lily, isn't it? That's not doing it. And Lana, Slater yeah, is doing well. It. Yeah. David, here, Lana, okay, sorry. here's my thing. Um, if you could only see one film over Christmas, would it be Matrix Resurrections or Spider Man No Way Home? Uh, that is quite tough. It would be it would be Spider Man, Spider Man, probably, yeah. but but uh, it's close for me. Closer than anyway, I'm fairly certain because the Matrix is part of this. Um, I'm more invested in because Marvel's more current. You know, you're more invested in it now. But the Matrix is a big. Yeah. Fucking is it deal. though? We'll see. We'll see. It is. It is. I. You know what? I'm really surprised by by your uh, lack of interest in it because I thought that would be more you than no, me because in everything that you because enjoyed. I loved the first one and the second and third ones. You feel like the two and three yeah, just butchered yeah. it, and there were the no story fell to pieces. There was cool action, but I understand that with the whole key maker like fucking shit. I understand. But um, that. here's the thing, right? Um, and my last thing on the Matrix, and this kind of sums up Zion being a cave. And break, here's yeah. my thing that annoys me. And it, again, I've, I've, I think I may have mentioned this before, but the music, right? So the first film ends with Rage Against the Machine, Wake Up, brilliant song, perfect. Again, you know what I'm like for my music. Being connected with the deeper meanings of the film. Yeah, yeah, you enjoy <clears throat> no, it. No, I didn't yeah. enjoy it. It's the song has to have a deep, a deeper <laughs> meaning and intertextuality within the film. If a song's used in the first place, I personally think something like John Williams or Hans Zimmer's scores within that's a film score have a much mm. deeper emotional, having a much deeper emotional impact than a song. Well, can. but the lyrics but of the song are literally "Wake up." And what's he done? He's woken up from the Matrix. Yeah, yeah. So that is perfect. And it was all part of that kind of 90, late 90s, you know, like rap rock stuff. But Okay, I want to ask you, how is that? How is that not on the nose for you, but the uh, only girl from uh, Marvel, Captain Just Marvel? Just a girl. Only, only a girl. By no Just doubt. Because um, there was better song choices. It's fine. I'm not saying it's on the no- too on the nose. It's fine, but there was better song choices they could have picked. I just want to. I just want to know where your line is, man. I just want to know where your line is between. On well, the it, nose it and depends not. on the context. Because if for me that's pretty fucking on the nose. Oh, it's, yeah, but it's the end credits, man. So it, it doesn't have to be like syncing up as well, does it? Literally. Okay, so your timing. Of course, yeah. The context film. is king, key, man. But so you've got Rage Against Machine, Wake Up, the end song on the first Matrix film. And at the end of Matrix Reloaded, you have another great Rage Against the Machine song, which is Calm Like a Bomb. And the whole lyrics are about fighting back and war. You know, it's generally Rage Against the Machine stuff anyway. And of course, this is then building up to the big fight with the machines for the third film. And then at the end of the third film, what should they have as the last song? Rage Against the Machine, Freedom. Killing in the Name of, maybe? I no, Freedom. They've got a song called okay. Freedom. I don't know any Rage Against Machine. That's the only one I know. <coughs> yeah. So that's the so, that's what I just took a shot in the dark. No, Freedom should have been the song, right? And again, you know, it's it's still a loud, angry song. And so it kind of shows up, well, they've kind of got some freedom, but not... It just works. It would have worked perfectly. But no, we get some shitty operatic choral music at the end. And I'm sorry, if you're doing a trilogy and you have the same band finish only two of the three films, the only reason I can think they didn't do it was that Rage Against the Machine was just like... No, this looks shit. We don't want to. Ask I understand your. I understand. It's slightly your OCD. Wife. It's slightly uh, OCD, right? You. No, I I do understand your you you you're, you're upset about yeah. that, Neil. And I know music, of course, and man. Specifically that genre of music. No, it's not that genre of music. I do think you're picking on the wrong thing when it comes. It's to a the small two- thing, man. It's just it's, just, it's <laughs> because I think that yeah, I know, I know, but because uh, there's a lot oh, more God, wrong yeah. with them than just the well, song I mean, at the end. I mean, but, having uh, that 28 minute exposition scene with the fucking shoemaker or whatever his name was. Um, oh, the architect. With who? <laughs> architect, yeah. yeah. Okay. What did you say? Shoemaker. Uh, I was oh, trying shoemaker. to make a joke, okay. but it, it fell flat. Fell flat. Yeah. Well, the, you, that whole fucking thing, even when you found out that the Oracle uh, was the one that came up with the whole idea of having, uh, of cr- being able to create the Matrix, which is in, keeps humans uh, happy and occupied, but there's always that 0.1% that rebel. And I, no, I think, and I think to round this off, David, would you take the red pill or the blue pill? 
Ooh, uh, take the blue pill. So you, I take the blue pill. I'm happy with my reality <laughs> at the moment. Fair enough. Yeah, I think. Oh, I don't know. Post-apocalyptic. I mean, uh, I would like to have my eyes, you know, my world opened. But what would you lose in having that? You know, I'd lose my partner. I'd lose my life. I'd lose my family. It's a very deep conversation to have, Neil. And on that, I think we can tie a bow in the Matrix. Linking it to Hawkeye very nicely. So, uh, what? Uh, quickly <laughs> on to what else we've been watching this week. And, uh, well, you've not really been watching anything, Dave, because you've been socially very busy. And moving house and weddings and just uh, generally having a life. You know, bastard. Packing, yeah. Packing to move I mean, house. Get the keys on this didn't Friday. I, didn't you say times. you're going to a wedding and then moving house the next day? That sounds an insane amount of stress yeah. and a bad idea. Yeah, saying. Natasha's Natasha's having a breakdown. It's... Uh... <laughs> Uh, I say that. You but... say that on a podcast that's going out to our thousands of viewers, listeners, the millions and millions of The Rocks fans. The thousands that are paying for our super yacht. Yep, yep. Oh, well, no, I own my super yacht now, man. I don't know what kind of deal you got going on. Did you, You're owning yours, man. I got, mine got, they, they came back to me saying that, you know, just because you broke thousands of dollars, they, they, they wouldn't let me out. Um, see, you got to bribe them with promos and um, you haven't been keeping your end up on the promos. That's what it is. <laughs> but anyway, right. in the last okay. week, I have completely pinch watched in two days uh, the whole third series of Six Education Season 3. And uh, do you know what, David? This is going to be non spoiler because I know you've just watched the first one, right? So, yeah, yeah. I will say, while still a great show, it does lose focus a little bit this season purely by trying. Well, no, oh, no, it's not in a bad, bad way. There's nothing like overtly bad in it, but there's so many. And it, this is the show's. Greatest strength and weakness is the same thing. It's got too many great characters in it. And you can't give screen time to all of them. And so certain characters have really basic plot arcs. And that's what the good thing is. Every character gets an arc, right? Every character starts here and ends up here. And you get the whole wheel. They won't lay with Otis and Maeve again. With his, like, pimp stash, which is pretty terrible. Um... But I'll give you an example. So we got a side character from season one and two, and they get given a major storyline in the first sort of three, four, five episodes of the season, and then they literally just disappear yeah. from the rest of the season and pop up for like one twenty-second scene in the finale. And I was just like, and okay. that's it's... are these people? Are these people that are like? Uh, is it like? Did this happen earlier in the school year? Or... No, no, it's because it all takes place around in a chrono- chronological order, to be fair, of the show. And I don't think it jumps around yeah. too much. So that's what I'm saying. Maybe their storyline was nicely wrapped up earlier in the year, you know, they resolved well, their problems. But the, the problem one. is, they keep, you know, onto this drama that happened after Christmas. The dro- and the driving force of season one was Otis and Maeve and their sex clinic, which kind of gave you a nice case of the week um, episode, which would then let you introduce all the other yeah. side characters. But none of those side characters yeah. have left. They're all still in it. And they introduce even more new characters. And there's just not enough space in the, in the in the story for it. I mean, so many episodes are over an hour long, which is fine, but it's just you will spend so little time with some of the key characters. You're just like, oh, you know, like, and some of them. To be fair, I'm going to contradict myself now. Some of the characters' plot lines don't really move on. It's kind of like they they'll have a problem, they'll moan about it for a couple of episodes, they'll have an argument with someone, then they'll resolve it and go, oh yeah, you were right, and that's the plot line. So it doesn't really. There aren't really signs of groundbreaking consequences. Again, not giving uh, it, uh, not giving the spoilers, but you know from the trailer that you get Jamina Kirk comes in as the new uh, head mistress of the school. Head, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've got I'm one episode in, Neil. You got don't bad like her already, about right? her. She's put, she's she's given she's given off some bad vibes, man. I don't like. I mean, I know the build. Like, in the first episode, they prevented her. Presented she's a her cool headmistress. She's cool. She's down with the kids. She's twenty eight and she's a headmistress. She's she fucking awesome. She sits on the stage. I ain't I ain't falling for it. I ain't fucking falling for it, Neil. She's a she's a snake in the grass. That one, and I don't trust her already. I don't know how it's gonna go. <laughs> I, but mean, I mean, I don't trust her. No spoilers, but you can kind of tell where it's gonna go. But. <laughs> Again, even with her character, they have all this build up and this build up, and then it just kind of drops. And you're like, "Oh, uh, could we have a bit more resolution to her storyline, please? Can we find out what's going on here?" And and yeah, it's just for me. I mean, oh, the, the other thing I have to mention is some of it was filmed, David, where we had lunch a few months ago. Yep, it was filmed. Yeah, no, I, I'm, I am looking forward to that to see our. 
lunch yeah, spot on It was camera. filmed down in Folkestone on the southeast coast of England, which is just bizarre. Because the bizarre yeah. thing is, it was only on one side of the shot. So you see one shot, and as they're walking past, you can see the Greek bus and the muscles um, stand in the background. I was like, wait a minute, that's the harbour arm. Then they cut to revert. Yeah, people aren't going to know this Greek bus or this bus stand. And it's out of focus as well. But, <laughs> they, but it's near yeah, where we live, where guys. We had it's near lunch. where we live. We it's literally fine. had lunch from the Greek bus yeah. in that show, it's there, which is in there for like 10 seconds in the background of a shot out of focus. And then um, you, you got the reverse shot, and you're like, oh, yeah, that's um, clearly the cliffs and the sea where we sit quite nicely in the summer. But then there's another angle from the same place and they're getting on, there's like a ferry terminal. And I'm like, that's clearly not there. But um, yeah, I found out and I did a little bit of research. <laughs> They've teleported to Dover or well, somewhere. <laughs> but I, I did a little bit more research and they filmed, there's, there's one episode, again, no spoilers, but there's an episode where there's a school coach trip to France and they just went to a cemetery up the road in uh, Kent again. So I think that rounds up sex education. But yeah, get, c- catch up on that day because it is, it is a very good show. And um yeah, I'm at, as long as as long as Eric and Adam are uh, super tight at the end of it, because I'm rooting for those lovebirds. Fucking love Eric, but I love Adam as well. What I will say, David, is they they Jesus have the best re- best relationship on the show of any of the characters, hands down. There's is oh, it's almost yes. it's almost like oh it's a maid, we don't care. Eric and Adam. Er, that, yeah, no, Eric, Eric yeah. and Adam. It's all about Eric and Adam. I don't give a shit about Otis and Maeve at this point, to be honest with you. I'm all about... And you know what? I'm quite liking the Ruby love at the moment <laughs> with, with Otis. I want to see where that's going. Yeah. So um, I think that rounds up our thing on Six Nation. So my last thing for the day, I have been watching from the producers of Line of Duty, but not actually written by Jim Curio, starring Saran Chose and Rose Leslie, Vigil, which is the BBC's big Sunday night submarine murder drama. Now... Talk about mis-selling it, man, right? This, there's like, everyone's trying to build it like this is a new line of duty, which most of us love dearly. And it's just not... It, like, the first episode started really well. First episode, there's a murder, or is there, on a submarine, and a cop gets sent on the submarine to investigate, played by Saran Jones. Now, guess what, David? Do you think she's probably going to have a, a traumatic event in her life where she doesn't like confined spaces? Uh, I don't think taking a job on a, a submarine is going to be a very good, very good idea. Like, taking a case on a submarine, sorry, is going to be a very good idea for her. If that is exactly, in fact, it would be very <laughs> stupid. In fact, you just pass it on to the next your colleague and be like, "Here, you take this case. I can't." Especially do it. if you're on medication for that exact issue. <laughs> then yeah, not not the not the smartest idea. I should be. I should. I I ain't I ain't watched anything no, to do yeah. with this, so I literally know know nothing. So I'm just going to come in with random comments like that, that and take the That's pretty much what I was doing Sunday night on Twitter, to be fair, man. Uh, <laughs> but, um, <laughs> yeah, so you've basically got a suicide slash murder on a nuclear submarine. It's full of pointless, okay. pointless flashbacks. Um, it's just not even close to um, line of duty quality. It's just full of annoying people doing stupid things, right? You're, you're on a submarine, and there may be Russians following them. And so you've got all these high-left things. And then you've got this, like, standard copper trying... There may be Russians well, because following not... them. So is there something following them? But you don't yeah, know whether they're Russians Yeah, and they were as Russians in the earlier episodes. And then like now they're like, oh, it could be the Chinese. And we're like, oh, well, that's just come out, that's just come out of okay. nowhere one episode from the end of the show. Okay. Aren't there only like, don't, don't, uh, uh, doesn't the UK only have like four subjects? Yeah, yeah, I think it's like that. And this is like one of them. And um, I mean, okay. it, but okay. season episode one, man, started off really well. There was like this awesome action scene of like her being airlifted down into the submarine. I was like, oh, this looks cool. Um, but then, and then you've got Rose Leslie. You remember her from uh, John Snow's Mrs. from, well, John Snow's Mrs. in, in, in real yeah, yeah, life, yeah, actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, um, yeah, yeah. His, 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 yeah, his real and uh, she's uh, playing yeah, just herself as, you know, a Scottish cop. <laughs> but you keep getting all these horrible flashback scenes. Whenever, like, the action's getting good, you're like, ah, and here's a shit flashback um, with her. And um, she has a relationship with the other copper. And it's just full of annoying people doing really stupid things. Oh, actually, Adam from Sex Education is in this, playing a Scottish. I yeah, saw yeah. him in the trailer. Uh, he hasn't done yeah. a lot in it so far, but um, he had one. He had one good scene where he's like, "Oh, I remember this guy can act." I'll give you the example, right? So from the last episode, David, there could be a bit where a, a dangerous. They found like a person dead, and um, their first thing is, "Oh, it's from fumes." Oh, what fumes? Oh, there could be a dangerous nerve agent, and so. They have to, they're going to have to send three people in in suits because it's too hot. And if it, they don't stop this thing, then the whole nuclear thing is going to blow up and it'll be like Fukushima. So it's bad. So they've only got three suits, which on a nuclear submarine, wouldn't you have more than that that could withstand like a lot of heat? 
You'd, you'd think. think if you had a nuclear submarine, you'd have more than one or two or three nuclear... Or Anyway, yeah. yeah and okay, and for would. whatever mm-hmm. stupid, stupid reason, the investigating cop decides to have one on and... And go in. Now, if you're the submarine commander and you're worried about national security and Russians and nuclear thing, and you've got a cop there like investigating a suicide slash murder, are you going to tell her, fuck right off and get, get out of the way? Like, you're not going to, like, oh, have one of the suits because we can't trust the people who you're going in there with and you can keep an eye on them. It was so. It was very, it was very uh, nice of that, um, you know, uh, what submarine leader to uh, progress the plot uh, yeah. for us. By giving her that, so that was very, and of course, so she's in the submarine and she's very bad with bad spaces. Do you think she's going to get stuck in a tighter space in the submarine? <laughs> Ma- no, maybe like a, su- a torpedo tube. Uh, why the fuck would she be in a torpedo tube? Why would uh, you well, even get in uh, one? She got knocked out and a bad guy put her in one. And then it starts filling okay. up with water. Is that? I'm, I mean, I'm going to put. Is that even? Is that even possible? I, mean, I, I have no idea. I've, I've never or been fight in a, a torpedo tube. Like, I mean, I've seen it in other films, but yeah. And then literally, mate, that episode literally yeah. ends with her just screaming as it's filling with water. And I was like, yeah. But I, um, my, my favourite bit from the whole episode is the only... F- you, were you more like, were you more like, eh? Or were you like, yes, fill, fill faster. Well, Kill her. Sh- Kill her. So we it's can funny talk I, and like, pay attention it's funny to somebody I'm else. It's funny because i actress in there. I think because she was a former soap actress called Saran Jones. And she's been in loads of like prestige BBC and ITV drama stuff over the last couple of years. And she's just, I mean, she's, I'm sure she's a good actress and other stuff, but in this, she's just really annoying. Like, I would be like, look, will you just fuck off with your fucking investigation? We've got bigger problems. You can sort that out later. She's like, no, I need to look at it now. And like, she literally got knocked out at one point because she ran, she was like trying to go through the sub and rush and someone just knocked into her. <laughs> and then she, and then she, and then she wakes up <laughs> from a nap and they're doing a drill and she thinks it's real. And like, she tries to stop them like firing nuclear weapons. It's fucking idiotic, man. Okay. So you're not a fan of the show so far? I'll say so far, mate. There's only one episode left, so I will finish it this Sunday. And um, okay. Well, I mean, it's put it one way. How many episodes? Is there six total? in total. I've suffered through five, five, five. I've suffered through. This will be the sixth one. Why are you continuing? Why did you continue if you didn't I, like uh, the show? Well, the, all the family watch it, so it's like a Sunday night. All get together and watch something on the big. Uh, okay. So yeah, you know, no, you have to watch enough. stuff you don't like sometimes. Um, yeah, but my favourite bit is literally. Yeah. I, I posted this on Twitter on Sunday. Night. I said. Amy, there's a dangerous nerve agent, but wait, and we need to get in there. Like, there's time's running out. Okay, but first, I need to do a really crap drawing of a bird, and I need you to give it to someone if I die in there. Oh, and also, before we go in there and save that, I need to do another flashback. Why did she need to do a drawing of a bird? I have no idea. In case she dies, is it is it like a secret message, or is it like an emotional thing to send to someone, like a child? Like, oh, no, I, I think I, it's I to a know missus. That this bird means that I love her. Uh, Okay, is that so? My missus will know that her, that this bird means that she loves her, or is it like a secret I message? Don't know because I wasn't paying attention. Oh, actually, one last thing. Um, I'll tell you what show. I also another show I've been watching, which is also set at sea, which also has a murder on it, but it's infinitely more better. Well, that's great praise. There, infinitely more better. Um, the North Water, which is on the iPlayer right now. Jack O'Connell, a unrecognisable I've never heard Colin of it. Farrell, and um, shit, a shitload of other really good actors in it. Did you watch The Terror a couple of uh, years or so back? Jack O'Connell. Jack O'Connell. Was he the bloke, the bloke in Skins? The played I don't Cook know. I didn't Skins. watch Skins. Jack O'Connell. I think it was. Yeah, I know him. Yeah, he, he he's not Irish, mate. Oh, okay. He's from Derby. He went... Because I, I knew it because I went to uni in Derby and he was uh, in and around the nightlife scenes. <laughs> oh. Just like, you know, dancing in the clubs okay. and stuff. Um, But, yeah. yeah. That was before he oh, was probably, famous? Yeah. I think I think it was around that but same time. Very actually. similar. Sky- oh, that's it. And Stephen Graham's in it as well. So Stephen Graham, Jack O'Connell, and uh, Colin Farrell. Colin Farrell going full Russell Crowe and just putting on a shitload of weight and looking like a monster. And so, so much so that people have gone, "No, that's not Colin Farrell. It? No, it can't be. He's too fat. He looks too much like um, Bert- Captain Birdseye." He's but too he's fat. he's gone full okay. Method Man and he's just this monster of a man. And um, you know, you know, it's it's it. it it's funny because I was talking to our, our guest um, Charlie Gallagher about it in the office the other day, and he gave up with it. He gave up on it on the fifth episode, and um, I was like, "Oh, I'm two episodes in, and I'm quite liking it." So uh, I'm going to see if the quality drops. But um, the coolest thing about the show is they actually went up to the Arctic Circle, just north of Norway, in uh, Solvard, I think was the place, and filmed a hell of a lot out there, and it looks um, amazing. Like for the cinematography, that's not CGI. They literally 
I don't know, I'm not sure if the boat's real, but they definitely flew out there and filmed some amazing drone shots of like the glaciers and the icebergs and that. So like you say, you've got Stephen Graham as like the ship's captain whose last ship sank, so he's not a very good captain. You've got um, Jack O'Connell's character is the ship's doctor, but fairly certain he's got some kind of drug problem that he's running away from. So we could be getting flashbacks to him in India in the war. I think when you have, sorry, just back on the location when you were talking about that, when you have when you're on location and you've got like practical effects, I think it just makes everything fucking. I'm just look. I'm just looking over this because I, I, I uh, I'm looking at some of the photographs and you are 100 percent correct. It looks stunning. It's some actually a stuff. film I'm gonna have to seek out again. Um, I've got it stuck away on a hard drive somewhere from years ago, and it was a low budget um drama called Red Knot, and it starred Vincent Carafizer. I can't pronounce his name. He was one of the guys in Mad Men. And he played um, Angel's son, Connor, in Angel all those years ago. And the basic plot of that film was uh, <clears throat> him and his missus go on for their honeymoon on an Arctic research vessel. And this film is super low budget. So they literally just went on an Arctic research vessel and then have this couple like have, you know, a drama and like falling out on their honeymoon. Well, as couples. Do, um, yeah. And I was just like, man, this has been shot. And I think the budget was next to nothing. And so I was like, I think there was like, if I remember reading rightly, they had a couple of Canon 5D Mark IIs, a couple of GoPros, and like one proper camera for filming this whole film. And uh, it just looked amazing, man. Because, I mean, you, like I always used to say with our job, you, you cruise around the world, you go to all these amazing, amazing locations, you have to be really shit with a camera to not get a great picture in these places, you know. <laughs> I mean, as, as much as I, I like people to go, oh, well, that's an amazing shot you got. I mean, yeah, you know, we, we, we are good camera people and uh, videographers and all that kind of stuff. But at the same time, it's very hard to take a shit picture in some of these locations and places you're in. Yeah, if you're at a lake volcano, uh, you yeah, you've got to you've got to really fuck that up somehow <laughs> to to make that look shit. Um, so yeah, so um, in in in, in summation, there don't watch Visual. It's um, it's really pants. It's not Das Boot, although I would give it the boot. What would you give it out of? Uh, how many nils would it get? At the how minute, it's on two ten? nils out of ten. Possibly going down to one. Two nils out of door. That is a, that is a really fucking bad nil. Maybe right maybe a four actually. Maybe a four going down to a three, depending on how it. Well, going from a two to a four, you've well, doubled this rating. It's competently, it's competently there, made. So. It looks it looks quite good. Uh, it's just people. It's stupid people doing stupid shit. Um, if she get. Okay, so what I'm hearing is you're not a fan it's of terribly, the script. Yeah. I mean the actors. You've got good actors in it. Just they're not giving anything to do with. Right. If she, uh, the minute it's a four, right. If it keeps going the way it's going, okay, four it's going to drop down to. a... Well, there's only one, see, the one so episode left. If it doesn't so. carry on being very good, it's going to drop down to a three. But if they have some balls and fire out the torpedo tube and murder her at the start of the final episode, it will raise it to a five. I just don't think they're going to okay. do that, though. All right. Okay, so... Could, okay, we'll see We'll see what happens. Uh, it could be... I mean, I mean even a five nils isn't, no, isn't it's a not, good it's amount not worth of nils. But, but um, on Wednesday, the 22nd of September, I'm going to cinema again, David, and I'm going to see... The Many Saints of Newark tomorrow night. Uh, Sopranos good movie. Luck. Good luck. Oh, and also, it. yeah, I've had no attachment to that, yeah, so you, I don't care. But I hope you enjoy well, it. Didn't for you yourself. watch the very last scene, the last episode, without context, to see what everyone was talking about? I believe we. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, um, yeah. One of your four, one of your colleagues. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Not, not, not because, not because of it was impactful or anything like that. Just because everyone was just like, "What the fuck's up with the scene? Why does it just cut to black?" That's why I was like, "Huh? Okay." And that's when I went into it. So it wasn't f for like just to see the end of the show to see how it ends. It was because everyone was talking about it for both positive. And it negative was definitely things. divisive. So but um, this has been um, I've, this has actually been directed by Alan Taylor, who directed many of the uh, episodes of the show. The funny thing is, Alan Taylor also directed for the Dark World, which is arguably the worst four movie. So um, arguably the worst MCU movie. For some reason, next week Cineworld are doing 4K screenings of. The whole original Lord of the Rings trilogy, three nights back to back. That's exciting. I think the uh, Harry oh, Potter celebrating see his 20th anniversary Harry at the moment films as well, isn't it? So I might do uh, Lord of the Rings though next week. I might go Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. I don't think it's all seven. I think it's. I don't think it's the, there will... the, all, all the Harry Potter films. I think it's just. No, I think it's just one Philosopher's cinema. Stone or a Sorcerer's Stone to all our we, Americans. Which we've got quite a few. We had some listeners in Virginia. I know that's why I wanted to. That's why I wanted to. We them. um we actually had and as I, as I Google frantically. Yeah, so um, we have actually had for our last episode, surprisingly enough, David, fill in time. Fill in time when I click stuff. Do a dance. Sing. 
Um, uh, stuff. I'm looking at stuff to do. Uh, uh, so cool, I found so you. Let me tell you about time. So, um, uh, yeah, so from our okay. just <laughs> new listeners from our last podcast, we've actually, like to say thank you to our new listeners in Danville, California. I wonder if that's run by a place called Dan, and he just named the place after himself. That'd be cool. Um, potentially we have some people at the FBI or CAA uh, onto us because we've got a listener from Arlington, Virginia. We've got someone in, and I'm uh, not even sure how to pronounce this, in yeah. Montezuma, Iowa. Uh, I Montezuma, no which is Montezuma? in Iowa. Yeah, go for it. And yeah, why not? That's a you put you put word you put letters together. That's a made up word. word. All words there. are made up. First listener from Helsinki <laughs> in. Again, I apologise. To our one listener from Helsinki for our pronunciation in U U S I M A A A. We should say these people yeah, need to get in touch message. with you on Twitter, Neil, and so you can be like, uh, yeah, we, we can give them a proper shout their on actual there, name. We can say, we can say, you know, um, John Baker in Dan. That's d- way too of an English we can name. Say, to we be can say hello in to Helsinki, Danville but... in Danville, California, if that is his real name. Yep, exactly. And yep, also, exactly. we had our first listeners from Norway. From iCast in central Jutland. I reckon... Well, yeah, I don't know. Place. Um, we just talked about Norway briefly, though, so I'm pretty sure I got Svalbard wrong. We also had a listener in Serbia, in Belgrade, uh, a listener in Paris. I feel like we're going to put all where of they our live. listeners off by, by well, saying I mentioned, all of the listeners. I mean, I ha- I'm just <laughs> yeah. mentioning... <laughs> <Being like, laughs> you, yeah. the one that's in Slovakia. <laughs> Thank you. And no. also, I think your friend in Ireland still listens well, to you. us, which is nice. Yay, Pam! If, if she... I'm glad Pam's still listening because Pam's uh, Pam. I think. I... Thank you. Thank you. If you got, if this, you far. got this far, thank you. Um, <clears throat> right, and I believe that wraps us up for this week on We Needed Roads. So coming up in a couple of weeks' time, uh, once David's got his life in order, which it's fifty-fifty on that in a minute, mate. Man, my, my <laughs> life's my life's never in order. Uh, but when <laughs> yeah. he is caught up, we will be doing our Mike Flanagan fantastic special on Midnight Mass. And I'll have some. I will have some fantastical Flanagan oh, yeah. flat. I can't say it. Let me try it again. I will have some fantastical Flanagan facts to fling at you, David. Next time, Flanagan facts. You got you're a Flanagan for me. No, I'm you're a Flan. For... You're a yeah. Flanagan. I'm a Flanagan. I'm a Flanagan fan. <laughs> and then, um, looking ahead for the next couple of episodes, because I've been planning stuff, we're going to be um, having our guest Charlie Gallagher back on. <laughs> I feel like that was. A, I feel like that was a slight dig at me there. And coming up for our next episodes because. I've been so planning have, stuff. Plan- <laughs> yeah. Someone over here. Hey, but you've a got a life. That's fine. <laughs> you know. Yeah. So uh, a couple of weeks. Uh, a couple of weeks after that, I think we're looking at in the first few weeks of October. We are going to be doing a Ted Lasso season two special review with our guest um, from a few months back, Charlie Gallagher, author of um, the Friend, will be coming on, and uh, his new book. Up- I know. I know. He's wanting our to come th- back. Our second I'm so guest happy about that. actually wants to come back. Our first has not. Our first has not yet. I know. They <laughs> want a repeat appearance. <laughs> uh, uh. But, um, yeah, so uh, Charlie, um, Charlie's going to come back and we're going to talk all things Ted Lasso. Um, and then we're pretty much at Halloween, David. So we are going to be doing our Halloween special, which is going to be yours and my top 10 favourite horror films of all time. And, um, again, our top... I reckon I could have a very close guess Well, save it for all of yours are. <laughs> A very Save it for the next part. Yeah. And we're out. David, say goodbye. Uh, uh, goodbye. We needed roads.